Hi everyone, Gary here from Drymatic Australia. Well, I'm here today to talk to you about one of our signature products. It's called the Drymatic 2. So the Drymatic 2, where do I use it? What can it do? You know, what, what, you know, how big of an area does it do? Can I use it instead of a dehumidifier? How can it complement the equipment I've already got? I don't understand heat drying. Can you explain it to me? These are some of the questions I get daily about, especially about the Drymatic 2. So I'm going to explain it to you in simple, simple terms. What is heat drying? Well, we heat materials, whether it's a wall, whether it's a floor, whether it's a ceiling, we heat the materials. They release the moisture from the material into the air. The Drymatic system picks it up from the air and exhausts it somewhere. And it could be usually out a window. So we're going to run through where we can exhaust, but a little bit about how the Drymatic 2 works. It's just a, it's a full heat and exhaust system. So it's exactly the same as having a closed dryer style thing for your home. We're, we're heating it up the area, the humidity level goes up, and then we exhaust the wet air. Okay, so let's run through how the pipes work and all of the attachments. And then we're going to run an instructional video on how the actual screen and the unit actually works itself. So, first off, what we'll do is we'll run through, you've got four pipes. Okay? So, how the units can be made, uh, how the units can, be, the unit can be um, set up. You can set it up on its side, like this. This has got a grab handle here. It's also got a handle here, but this is not a lifting handle. What this handle is, is it's got wheels on it, so we can wheel it. Just like, you know, we're going to do, say, you know, a trolley, um, you know, like a, you know, luggage bag. So, 25 kilos, rotor molded, stackable units. Very robust, very robust. So, let's talk about the pipes that we can put on here. So, it comes with this Drymatic bag, and in this Drymatic bag, you've got four hoses. So, you've got these grey style hoses here, and you've got a foil style, style hose here. Now, the foil style one goes on the heater out there. So, what we do is we put it on, and we twist it in place to lock it in, just like so. And that is our heater pipe. Okay? So, then you've got the room intake. So, we'll run through the options on the room intake. So, option one, let me put one of the pipes here for the room intake. Just like so. Then we've got the outside exhaust on the other side, which we will put on. We will interchange these hoses in just a little bit. And then, on the other side here, we've got the outside intake, which we will talk about. Just like so. Okay. That way we can get rid of this bag. Pop him down on the floor here. Okay. So, Let's run through some of these uh, connections here. So there's two modes of operation on this machine. The first mode is called the exhaust mode or the purging mode. So what happens is there's cylinders inside, inside this machine, right? two big cylinders in here. So what happens is right here there's a big duct fan and right here there's a big duct fan. And here's what happens. The room intake sucks through the room intake, down through this duct fan, and exhausts. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the air from the room and exhausting it somewhere. Okay? When it does that, we have an outside intake. Now the outside intake, we'll focus on this one. What it's doing is it's searching for the driest air possible. So is that outside? Is that in an unaffected room? Is that in a room that we're doing? 
we could be drying a timber floor with the drymatic system and drymatic boosts and mats. In the bedroom, we could have a dehumidifier and some fans. So the bedroom might be the driest air. Driest, warmest air is the best. Driest air is the second best. And then hot, wet air is the worst. So if I lived in tropical Queensland, up in Cairns, say, I wouldn't want to pull the air from outside in summer because it's going to be wet and hot and bringing wet air back into the environment. So that's not a good idea. But if I'm, if I'm in um, South Australia, um, you know, say if I'm, you know, west of Adelaide or northwest of Adelaide, where I'm, I'm sucking in really dry, warm air in summer, perfect. I'll put that actually where a window might be and I'll be pulling that warm, dry air from the window, from outside, into my drying environment. So when it does that, it comes through here and it hits the heater that's right here. And it heats that air up. And when you heat air, you drop relative humidity. So by heating that air, you drop the relative humidity and you're pumping out nice, warm, really hot, dry air into my drying chamber. So it continually does this step. When you first turn the machine on, okay, it does this step. Now it does this step for one hour and then what it does is it goes into recirculation for two hours. So recirculation mode works like this. It sucks through the room intake here. It comes here and there's an actual vein, a metal vein that's in here that runs along just here. And what happens is when it goes into recirculation mode, it actually cuts these two pipes off here. So the air comes around here and comes back around here, back through the fan and back through the heater. So all it's doing is sucking the air from the drying chamber, coming back through the machine and warming it, dry, sucking it, warming, sucking, warming, sucking, warming, sucking, warming. And it does that for a couple of hours. And then it, what it does is, I want to go into exhaust mode. Automatically it goes into exhaust mode for the next eight hours. Sucks, exhaust. Brings in, could be fresh dry air from outside, could be from an unaffected area, could be from the drying chamber that we're, that we're actually drying. It could be warm, dry air, ready to go in there. So what does the air look like that you're sucking in? So if it looks like it's snowing outside, that's still dry air. It's cold, dry air, but it looks like a desert outside, that's going to be the best option. So what does the air look like? So it keeps doing that. Now let's run through how we can set up these pipes. So the room intake... Okay, there's some options. So because this one is continually sucking, it's the power of, we can use up to three pipes. So what we've got here is we've got, pull this over here. This is our white piece kit. So our white piece kit comes like this, where it comes with three of these 150 mil hoses and all your Jubilee clips. And it comes with a hose joiner as well. Because this particular one here, again, it goes in and turns and locks, locks in place. And then what I do with that is I can put two pipes off here. So these pipes are six meters long. I can put two of these pipes off one side with the joiner and one pipe off the other side. I can put maximum of three pipes off this. Okay? So let's say that I'm doing a townhouse and I've got a yellow tongue floor upstairs and the carpet's been removed. I can suck that air from upstairs and I can also suck that air from downstairs. So I'm actually dropping the relative humidity in multiple places. So we do have a, in our resource center on the drymatic.com.au website, we have a formulation to work out how many drymatics you need in a particular property. You put in the sizing of the property and it works out the class of water damage and it works out how many drymatics you need. But I like to do two air exchanges per hour. And by doing two, two air exchanges, you're looking at about 300 cubic meters. So it does, at 595 cubic meters, it does one air exchange an hour. So that's, that's what we can do with that room intake, with that Y-piece kit. So whenever I take 
the drymatic on the job, the Y piece kit comes with me as well as my hose kit. Okay? So that's a little bit about this, this one. Then we're going to go to the outside exhaust, okay? And I'll show you what we can do with the outside exhaust. Because the outside exhaust, where can we exhaust it, right? This is our size of pipe here. Where can we exhaust it? Well, what we can do is we can exhaust it now into a smaller place. Where now, we've got 100 mil. So that some of the places where we can exhaust it, we can exhaust it into a fireplace, could cover up that plastic area and exhaust it into a fireplace. We could exhaust it out of doggy door. We could exhaust it into a bathroom vent. We could exhaust it out a window. We could exhaust it in a room with an air conditioner to take away the wet air. We could exhaust it into a dehumidifier as long as the dehumidifier can cope with that exhaust temperature. You need to check the capacity of your dehumidifier. We could exhaust it uh, up into a downlight, up into a ceiling vent, up into a ceiling cavity. We could suck the water out of the toilet and exhaust it into the toilet because most toilets have stackers on the roof, the exhaust stacker. Um, so there's plenty of places we could exhaust it. We could actually make a cube of plastic in the shower, exhaust it into there, and then it, it actually reaches dew point in there and drips, drips, drips into the drain. Exactly like if you had your clothes dryer in the laundry and you shut the doors and windows and you come in and the exhaust was coming out into the laundry and you looked up and the ceiling saw droplets, it reached dew point. So there's many places where you could exhaust that. And having that little option, the little exhaust, you can put in that little bathroom window above the, the, the little toilet window, there's a little gauze up there. So there's a few options you can do with that exhaust. So it's the power of two with the exhaust. I can actually put two pipes up there. I can run my big exhaust pipe and then my smaller one if I want, or two big pipes if I, if I need to. So I can exhaust with two pipes. So your outside intake, it's two pipes as well. So we can bring two pipes. So we've got a three pipe here, two pipe here, and two pipes here that I could actually put off it to extend. So outside intake, we know what the go is with it. The outside exhaust, the room intake, and the heater outlet. So I could actually set the machine up outside the drying chamber. You know, I could be drying under plastic. I've seen guys dry ceilings and have plastic up and run just pipes up there. So the minimum pipes you've got to run is the room intake and the heater pipe. That's the minimum. So I know I've dried big basketball area, stadium areas where I've dried uh, sections in that area under plastic. My exhaust is this big open room. So that's a little bit about the, the side of things that you got here with the white piece. So let's run through what else we've got. Also, we have this particular kit here take out the wide piece and we'll take off the heater pipe we've also got injection so we can inject with our injection setup so what we can do we can do push and pull so I can inject underneath the kitchen I could inject into a wall cavity I can inject the heat and I can pull out the wet air on the other side. So I could run it neutral pressure. So I've got seven outlets that go in and seven outlets that come out. These are our little hose cuffs. So they can connect to my hose. Just like so. So I can run a hose off there. And this is 38 mil inside diameter and 44 mil outside diameter. So what I can do with that is I can actually, I can actually do say neutral pressure where I've got seven pipes blowing in heat, seven pipes sucking out. Or I could have five blowing in and five sucking out. Or I could have, and under positive pressure, I could have seven blowing in and five sucking out. Or I could have it under negative pressure where I could have five 
blowing in and seven sucking out. Or I could have three blowing in. I've got options. But never cap these off. If you're only running less pipes, just leave them open. Do not ever cap them off. You put too much restriction on the heater. And the heater will just shut down. So we don't want that. It's very, very safe. But what also we can do is we can start to dry under kitchen cupboards with this little kitchen kit that comes with it. So we have 20, 25 mil inside diameter, 28 mil outside diameter, and we can go on the base shelf of the cupboard, the white laminates at the back, and drill 28 mil holes, pop these pipes in, push and pull, and what we can also do is after we've finished, you can buy them from hardware like Bunnings, you can get a 40 mil vent with a 28 mil insert, so it just pops nice and flush into that hole, and they could ever aerate the kitchen, they could put pesticide in there later on. Never had any qualms about making those holes in someone's kitchen. They're at the back and no one ever sees them. So, just recapping on the dramatic system. We've got the injection side of things that we can do, push and pull. We've got the Y-piece kit, and we've got our hose kit with our multiple setup here. Okay, so any further questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a look at this at drymatic.com.au. Our next video on the Drymatic is going to be about instructions on having a look at the screen. Thanks so much for watching.